will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. This is the best episode in season four thus far. I mean, just wow. Hasbro actually took the bittersweet route we all hoped they would with this episode, which is sort of depressing when you think about it, but it's true. Let's talk about the white elephant in the room that is Skulu's flying disability. Fans have noticed it for a while, but this is the first time it's been addressed directly in the show itself. And yeah, it is unnatural that Scoots is not able to fly at her age. And yeah, it is implied she may never fly no matter how hard she tries. At the very least, she will never be anywhere near as good a flyer as her idol, Rainbow Dash. Scoots knows this, and it hurts. Boy, does it hurt. However, this bitter reality is countered by Rainbow Dash's beautiful moral support she provides in this episode. But flying is what Pegasus ponies are supposed to do. You flew when you carried the flag in the games. But that was me. You're you. And it just doesn't matter if you can fly or not. <laughs> Master! This advice is able to transcend Scootaloo's disability and be a true lesson for any pony or brony. It's a lesson of hope that I applaud Hasbro for not cheating out on and forcing a happily ever after flight at the end. Okay, the theme and morals are awesome. How does the rest of the episode stack up? Pretty bucking well, actually. We finally get to see some development in the CMC and how they brush off Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara's initial blank blank taunts. Speaking of the little vermin, wow. Simply wow. They've done despicable things before, but here they are directly mocking Skulu for her disability, and they are really scarring her for it. To summarize every brony's reaction at this point, isn't it obvious? It is to us. In fact, it's obvious to every pony. You're showing all three types of Ponyville ponies, yet you have a Pegasus pony who can't even fly! <laughs> I mean, a Pegasus pony at your age? You should have been flying long ago. <coughs> so what if my wings can't get me off the ground? Your career as a flag carrier isn't getting off the ground either. Harshwini will never pick a Pegasus pony who can't fly to represent Ponyville in front of all of Equestria. <laughs> well, have fun practicing anyway. Even if your routine will never, how shall I say, take off. Taking revenge! Yeah. We also get an enjoyable music sequence. In fact, the first song of the season. Took surprise any long to reach them, I'll admit. While the lyrics are confusing, seriously, what is a horse in this universe? The beat is endearing and sets up a climax well. The final race to the performance is easily one of the best sequences in the entire franchise. It's beautiful and full of all the feels. Also worth noting, Rainbow Dash's characterization is just beautiful. And it really has shown how much she's grown as a character. You'd better be prepared to step up your game! You call that fluffing? What's gotten into you, Scootaloo? I didn't want to ruin their chance to win just because I couldn't fly. And who said you had to? <laughs> With all that said, on my second watch through, I did pick up on several flaws. One was how Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle rejected Scootaloo. Yes, I know they are frustrated, but it's blatantly obvious the issue for Scoots is not just in the performance. The way they reject her is just cruel and out of character. With as close of friends they are, they should have picked up that this issue is really serious for Scoots. Do they really need to have it spelled out with neon lights? You know what, Sweetie Belle? Forget it. If she's gonna quit, we don't want her, and we don't need her! I'm not saying their breakup was not justified or does not make sense in a structural sense, but it should have happened in a more remorseful manner instead of a breakup out of frustration and anger. More akin to how Rainbow Dash was feeling after Fluttershy runs off in Hurricane Fluttershy, either times. You'll be able to lift tons of water up to Cloudsdale. <sighs> if only there was a way to lift Fluttershy out of the dumps. Hey, it feels like it's all about you now. She's right. It's like you don't even need us anymore. And no. The, but they're just kids excuse undermines children. I'm sick of that excuse. Stop using it. 
Besides that, there are also several slight pacing and tension issues near the episode's center. Don't get me wrong, most of this episode has brilliant pacing, but the sex around the second performance feels too dragged out. Also, I feel it would have been better to have a more disastrous performance instead of a boring one to maintain the mounting tension that is screwed loose in her conflict. Having the performance just sort of flounder just seems to take away a lot of the well built up tension to have it be replaced by a mad point in the middle of the story. With all that said, this episode is still freaking amazing. The whole easily outweighs my nitpicks and I like to say this episode is sort of a nice sister or companion episode to Hurricane Fluttershy in the same way I consider suited for success in Sweet and Elite sister episodes. Heck, they both even revolve around Pegasi flight issues and have Snowflake as a supportive background character. While just sigh of Hurricane Fluttershy, Flight at Finish is still easily earned for Hoofs Out 4. It's the best episode so far this season and likely the best CMC episode of any season. And I start for a new writer. So, till next time, keep calm and an open mind. Seriously, stop being a flank tease. Discord's reformed, Twilight's an alicorn, the elements of Carmony are gone. Get over the bucking cutie mark arc already. It's getting old. Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Skooloo are strong enough characters to survive on their own in new adventures. They don't need to have the cutie mark arc continue forever. So stop beating around the bush and just get it over with. It's becoming painful and annoying.